strongest. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the uh, lobby just started. Um, let's start expecting uh, Sapphire. He won yeah. last last uh, round. They pick Elise. <laughs> Elise again. First person. Last time it was Terry who picked Elise. Now this time it's Sapphire who's picking Elise. Did you did you like Elise last patch before the Quillbor nerfs? Because I thought she was very strong before the nerfs. The, because she was so no, I, I, I personally don't like Elise. And without a two cost map, it's not that good anymore. Right. Oh shoot, my spectators. Not doing well for me. One second as I load into the game, but looks like. Who are the who are the heroes that have been selected so far? So we got uh, Elise, Jandis, uh, Nars Domu, uh, Death Speaker Blackthorn, and Sky Captain Craig. Sky Captain Craig, that's an interesting one. What do you think about Craig? I, I think he's a like an okay hero, but it just seems like his hero power is so underwhelming. Yeah, he's not the best hero, but eh, often. Use on turn seven, turn eight, and try like basically have two turns on one turn. Try to get like a good, good, a good uh, co combo right away. High tempo play. A lot, a lot of like... times uh, we we have people like speed tearing up, but uh, you don't always have to do that. You can just stay tier four and uh, get like a good tier four comp ready right away. Yeah. And tier four is generally, I, I I talk about this to quite a lot of other players too. But you either stay on tier four or you go to six. I don't know if you'd agree with that, but it just seems like staying on tier five, unless you're like hard playing menagerie, going for the light fangs and the mithraxes and the brands, it just seems like a mistake a lot of the time. Yeah, um, you shouldn't you shouldn't always go to the five right away. Uh, if you have a good menagerie setup, then yeah, you can see it, but. Four, four can get a lot of good comps. Quillbar comp can stand for mech, taunt, demon. Yeah. So it looks like it looks like a lot of people got their token stars except for our poor Jandis. Uh, it does look like Jandis was able to flip into her vulgar homunculus, hence why she did not take any damage. But so I'm not super surprised here. The shop is pretty weak. Sapphire going for the t uh, turn three on three. I mean tavern three on three. Now, this is, I don't know if it actually matters, and it probably doesn't matter on Elise, but in general, how do you feel about selling the cat, and which cat? Does it matter to you at all? Uh, usually it doesn't, uh, usually when we're fond of this game, maybe it matters a little bit more, but, uh, a lot of times you don't even triple it. Uh, when you're going to three, it makes a lot of sense to sell out the original, because in case you get Kagar into another eye cat, but you could triple it. But uh, that's rare case. Yeah, and that's a good point. I actually like that 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 point a lot. I didn't really think about that. But it looks like Kavan really going all in with these blood gems each round. Really, like the last game we saw him going all in on the Draken and Enforcer. Now he went all in on the Pirate. So we see a not the best shop for Sapphire. I'm curious if he'll power level to seven here, or if he just takes two like average minions. Um. I could see him tearing up, but looks like he's gonna just discover. Goes for the discover, finds the imp gang boss. I, I don't think going imp gang boss juggler is terrible. It's not the absolute nuts, but I, I think it's actually pretty strong tempo. Yeah, it looks like he's gonna buy the imp gang juggler. Uh, it's not the worst, but eh. It's a direction. Yeah. Hey, maybe we can find more demons next turn and uh, get a, a juggler comp going. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, juggler comp, I think, is always going to be like a good, safe way of at least not t bottomating. But it is one of those things that it, you eventually just get to a point in the game where you're doing nothing. So it's hard to. I think it's generally a mistake to overcommit to it, but I think it's fantastic tempo for right now. Looks like he is not getting the juggler comp dream. He did get slapped by our man, by our. What is he on? Under Nas Dormu. Put two love on the Nas. Looks like we do kill the two drop. Yoho Ogre is down, so he does save two health here. Unfortunate that the first hit did hit into the juggler, though. That definitely is not what he wanted. But Sapphire's not, unfortunately, not getting too strong of minions. He, he discovers it. Yeah, he went for Discover, too, since there aren't that 
good to shop. So he's planning on buying an overseer, but the question is which tier two would he take? Would he? I, I would personally pick Sorlisk because it has the most potential. But uh, is he considering unstable goal? So so he can go for the yeah. imp gang unstable goal synergy. Yeah, that I like pack. It. Pack leader plus the kind of ground is also an option, but it's unlikely that I would pick that. Yeah, there's a lot of direction here, but it's not necessarily the direction he probably wants to see. But this is still fine, I think. Right? So he goes in, he gets the 4 6 hitting ideally. They hit into the ghoul, and he gets a trigger to kill the demon that the 4 6 spawned, the in boss spawned. So he's doing a quick 3 damage to anything, but. We'll see what happens. It looks like Jandis did find a token, so she's definitely happy about that. Gets the hit, but it actually kind of decimates her current board with the Scallywag and the other token. The Soul Juggler is going to bring the work of this board, but he does get the snipe, so it looks like this Ritualist will potentially get more value, and she did get lucky and killed the two drops, so taking probably not as much damage as she could have. Yeah, could definitely take more damage if, uh, if Juggler yeah. lived there. Ooh, this is starts getting spicy. Finds the devourer, probably gonna eat. Yep, goes and there, discovers the three. Uh, I think discovers the four the drop. And, uh, the four, yeah. I mean, is the highest tempo. I believe he'll take it. Argus is also an option, but uh... if I'm Sapphire in this case, and my juggler's been sniped two games in a row, I'm not gonna lie, that defender is looking pretty cool, but I don't think it's correct. Yeah, high main is a lot more tempo and could potentially give you a direction later on, but uh, Argus yep. does allow the demons to die before this juggler. It goes for the high, it goes for the high main. I, I like this play, and I like it because you don't want to be overcommitted to the jugglers. I think like the chance of your juggler getting sniped like that two games in a row is pretty low. You probably don't play around that low of a chance happening three times in a row. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's unlikely. Keep up the momentum. Likely gonna get at least one juggler, uh, one juggler off, one juggle off, and uh, what do with this? So this ghoul is amazingly doing solid work here, but it does kill the spawn with. Probably not the greatest, but I don't think it really matters. This juggler will make quick work of this board. Looks like Sapphire's in a pretty good spot here. Yup, dealing another three to the enemy. Looks like he's gonna be taking about 13 damage, so it goes down to 20. So Sapphire is actually, I think, starting to come back. Had kind of a rough start, but the juggler's really helping him here. See so an arm in the shot, probably not good enough to take. I, I imagine he'll just roll past this, but we'll see. Mm, yeah, apparently it's not that great. We do have one taunt, but it's not a taunt that we want to keep for too long. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely a rough shop. You definitely don't want to be rolling on nine gold, but I, I think it is what you have to do here. He does technically have two rolls because he could easily sell his cat as well as the ghoul, so it doesn't feel as bad as it could considering those are two units that are probably going to go either this turn. Oh, he goes for the level... Interesting play. Double cells. Discovers a five. I think you take the. Do you take the Mithrax? I would take the Mithrax here. Probably the Mithrax. Seven, Doesn't make sense yeah. to take anything else. But he wanted the uh, Void Lord there to get a lot of tempo, but Mithrax is fine. We got two tries right now, and it does keep scaling every turn. So let's keep in mind that Jandis has two triples. Definitely got two sixes, so Jandis is looking quite strong here. We'll see what she discovered, but I'd be surprised if she didn't have two sixes at this point. Oh, so she actually discovered fives. So she discovered a Light Fang and is going for uh, Mama Bear shenanigans. So it looks like she actually discovered on four. Probably felt that she was too weak to go for the sixes, but this makes sense. This is disgusting, what you can do with Mama Bear and Alley Cat. I that you discover are... six for, uh, with Jandis, uh, this is pretty normal play. Yeah, you don't discover. You don't think you discover sixes anymore? No, after, I... after the nerf? no, and uh, with Jandis, no. Jandis, do you go for fives? I... Oh wow, that's an insane start with. That is an insane shop. Double, double juggler, double void loader, in in one turn. That's curious. What you sell here? Well, you. 
because you could overcommit to demons. You could sell the Mithrax, pick up the other demons, and then you're pretty much there. You could sell the high main and do something similar, but I feel like you're trying to force too many different things. The Mithrax on its own will be a 7-9 next turn, even with only one tribe, so it's still pretty beefy. It'll be a 7-10. Uh, or 7-10. Right? Yeah, yeah, 7-10. Um, I, I don't know. He might sell um high main here. Oh, he's gonna triple he's going all in. He's gonna triple sell so he can have an extra taunt. Yeah, with the juggler. Like so he's going all in on jugglers. So, do you think? So I'm curious though. So last patch on Jandis, were you tripling into sixes or fives? No, I was tripling fives. Because I think a lot of players are tripling into sixes. So that's interesting. You were still going for fives, but yeah, no. I and just so you guys are aware, the interaction with Jandis, Mama Bear, and the tokens is that because of Jandis's hero power, you can keep swapping tokens, uh, sweep, keep swapping cats that summon tokens. And since you have the Mama Bear, every time you play it, it gets plus five or plus four, plus four. And when you swap it, it keeps those initial stats from the swap. So if you were to swap a token once. It'll get plus eight plus eight from the mama bear, which is why you're seeing such a small alley cat, because then the alley cat is tripled and it obviously consolidates those stats. So that's if you guys are curious why those cats are so big, it's actually pretty typical play for getting uh, mama bear on Jandis, which is why another reason why tripling into fives is so good, because there's just so many outs you can do with this hero. Looks like Nazdur Moo is going to be taking quite a bit. I think he is just dead. Yup, 16 damage. Fortunately. They were not strong enough to beat a, a double juggler void lord. Double void lord. So what do you? So let's see. At this point, I think I would still pick up this faceless. Right? Oh yeah, I mean, you definitely take a faceless. Yeah. It's very early. What, what else are we looking for? We could take the other faceless. We could get a triple Mithrax next turn, but I don't think that's good. I, I, I think you might be in a position, but he's kind of weak. Let's see what Craig is doing. Craig's on five with two triples, playing Pirates three. Could this mean Scam Comp to you? Mm, yeah, that's possibly Exodia. Uh, two triples, three Pirates. Uh, it's, it might be like uh, two Scally, one Eliza, or maybe even double Eliza with Scally. I'm curious. I, usually when I see Pirates 3, turn 9, I do want to, my, my mind instantly race to double Scally, Eliza, Khadgar, Baron stuff. But it is also pretty early. And interestingly, this comp, the way he's got it set up, would actually smash Exodia Pirates. Like, he's got two Void Lords, so Scallywags probably aren't getting value. The jugglers could easily snipe off a Khadgar or a probably just a Khadgar. Baron would be too much high health, but I, I think if he has an Exodia Pirate, Sapphire is pretty safe here with this comp. Yeah, um, so since our taunts have three uh, health, it might be uh, good enough to uh, survive against. Um, uh, block block the Scallywags from uh, dying if he was uh, the Exodia comp, but it looks like you just. Multiple pirates got core there as well. Going for that. Liza Pros, buff, buff the other mins, and see if this is good so enough. Yeah, so it looks like he wasn't actually, it looks like he was actually going for a pretty strong menagerie style comp using the Eliza. Looks like... See, but I do think that Sapphire is probably dead here. There's just too much damage coming out of a six drop and a five drop. And yeah, so it looks like Sapphire goes out in fourth. Let's see what Terry is doing. I'm curious to know what this Janus is up to. Yeah, sure. We can check what uh, Terry is up to. So it looks like Jandis is just doing Jandis things, swapping out these kitties. Gets a pretty big... Oh, looks like there's the triple there. I'm curious, though. So we do freeze the triple here. We're not really looking to do any more shenanigans. That's going to get a lot of value. But do you think if we, he didn't see the triple here, he would sell his 5-5 five, five alley cat and put the Charlie down? Uh, probably. Charlie got his, uh, a lot of tempo, more than the alley cat, but... This triple is definitely, he definitely wants this. Try to get like a potential like Goldrin, maybe, maybe another Max or Coiler. Yeah. But Goldrin is definitely the one that he's looking for the most. Yeah. 
And the thing, too, is with Goldrin that I think a lot of players don't realize is that, yeah, like, obviously Goldrin with Macaw is the nuts, but a lot of the time, if you just have a beast board, you could just put your Goldrin first, and it's still plus 5-5 five, five with your whole board, and when you think about it, you got a board of beasts, 6 times 5, that's 30. You're putting 30 stats on your entire board for one card, that seems like it's pretty good to me. Definitely good. So he's still on the Scally. I, I do think that Terry's a little bit too big with these kitties right now, even with the Eliza. Oh, he gets the boat. Let's see what comes out of this boat. I've lost too many games to boat dropping double Eliza, but so far, actually, if this boat gets something good, I actually don't think Terry is favored to win this. Gets the double Eliza, but it gets quickly sniped off, so that's not terrible. Let's see what happens here. It looks like, yep, it's going to be a win for the Crag. That boat definitely, definitely... Definitely not what he wanted to see there, but you know, we've all been scam boat scam coilered before, so you can't be too surprised. It does always happen at the worst times. So uh. Looking to pick up the triple, probably looking for the Goldrin. Swaps in. This is just a good play to save gold. Yep, because we're always buying this. Let's see what we get. Oh, you got the Buying Goldrin. Goldrin. So, oh, this is interesting, though. Do you think we're ever out of the Mama Bear at this point? Mm, not yet. We still have uh, the other Tabby Cat that is only a 6 6. We can sell that first before that. Oh, Mama right, Bear. right, right, right. We do see the, yep. Well, so we've got to put this Hydra down and the Goldrin down, right? So we, we sell the Hellmaster. I actually, what do you think about selling off the Mama Bear for the Charlie? I actually don't think it's terrible. I think it might be. It's better, obviously, for this turn. No, for some reason, he chose to buy Flat Tusk. Doesn't have a lot of synergy right now, but I guess he wants a little bit of buffs for later on. Here's what he ends on. So he ends on the Flat Tusk. I, I think he's doing this because he knows that he's going to have to sell something next turn. If he was really prioritizing that Mama Bear, I actually like this play a lot. Just because you probably don't need it against the Ghost. You are so big, and you'd rather have the Goldrin as like a permanent spot. Um, but So I actually don't mind this play. I, I wouldn't have actually minded putting the Charlie down here. Yeah, for personally, I'd point. rather have the uh, Dragon on, on board because it makes more sense. You buff your minions right now. Yeah. You don't have any uh, synergy with uh, blood jumps anyway, so just getting immediate like six six onto the board is uh, good. Yeah. So it looks like we've just got too many stats for these jugglers to go down. And Sapphire's been out for a couple turns now, so obviously we're going to be scaling way beyond the point of having to worry about this. So I can see why you'd do the play, but I think you're right, and I think we would have rather seen the plus one, the blood gems on every minion. Let's see what happens here. I'm curious to know if Crag and what happens with Death Speaker and okay, so Crag is still in. Crag was on the Eliza Pirates playing with the Bristle, uh, the, the the Knight. I think it's the Bristleback Knight is the name of the card, right? Trebish went out because of uh, the Crag, so the Crag looks like it's going to be really strong. So looks to swap, hopefully into the Gambler. Doesn't get the Gambler, buys the Gambler. Probably going to pick up the the. The cave hydra buys the hydra. What are we looking for here? So probably going to look to end on Goldrin. Might be looking for Baron at this point to end on. So let's say if we could, I think ideally we end on, oh, there's an Agum, but probably too late to do anything with it. <laughs> yes. We're just mostly looking for like uh, either a Macaw or a Baron. Mostly a Baron. Baron gives you a lot more tempo with the Goldrin. Yeah. We have one more roll to find it. Okay, so I think we're actually out of the Mama Bear, and we, yep. No, 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 play. I wouldn't sell, because uh, it's not that much stronger. The Mama Bear is like, eh, maybe, maybe we can sell it. It's not like the worst, but Mama Bear gets buffed up with Godrin, so it's not, Charlie is not that strong. It's just plus six, uh, but I would have definitely played it last turn, not, not Flat Tusk. See if this is good enough. Got a lot of buffs for the Hydra because of the Flat Tusk. We do see the Zodiac Pirates. So he just takes advantage of uh, Kagar for it to spawn multiple um, Scallywags. But he only has uh, one Kagar, so it's not going to be a lot of spawns. 
That was a coiler. And this does looks not like... look. Doesn't look like uh, Janice gonna lose this. Uh, Terry looks that like looks it's like gonna. Terry comes first. The kitty hats just got him there all the way. You love to see it. Comes down, does way more than enough to kill. And it looks like we're done with round one. Pretty exciting stuff. So these are the five man lobbies. This is our elimination round. Now we move on to a more traditional top 64 eight man lobby format. So I'm excited to see some, some more traditional gameplay.